Hello again, pilots. Today I will show you how to analyze and respond to damage received in combat while maintaining control of your aircraft. Battle damage can affect your aircraft in a multitude of ways, including loss of lift, loss of engine power, Loss of controls. And structural failures. This is your aircraft damage indicator. It shows a top-down view of your aircraft, including all internal components that may be affected in combat. Damage severity is shown through colors, yellow for light damage, orange for moderate damage, red for heavy damage, and black for destroyed components. You are also provided with an in-flight x-ray examination of your aircraft. You can access this feature by holding the O key on your keyboard. The X-ray gives you a 360 degree picture of damage inflicted to your aircraft. Your ability to survive battle damage depends on the severity of the damage, the speed in which you can identify the damage, your ability to retain control of the aircraft, and altitude available to recover from any maneuvers performed prior to being hit. Recovering from structural damage is fairly straightforward. However, things get more complicated once control surfaces are compromised. Your aircraft's primary flight control surfaces are ailerons, rudder, and elevators. Your plane may also have secondary control surfaces, such as flaps or air brakes. Any of these control surfaces that become damaged can have a severe detrimental effect on your aircraft's controllability. Losing aileron control will prevent you from rolling your aircraft. This is a particularly dangerous situation if you are inverted, as it may be impossible to right the aircraft. Losing rudder control will inhibit your directional yaw motion. This is not a particularly dangerous case, but your aim will be significantly impaired. When flying a swept wing aircraft and your rudder is damaged, it may throw the aircraft into a Dutch roll, uncontrollably swinging the aircraft left and right. Losing elevator control will cripple your aircraft's pitch motion. This is an extremely dangerous situation at low altitude. Even if your elevator control is destroyed, a pilot still has options. Dropping your flaps can, in most cases, help lift the nose of your aircraft, buying you time to figure out what to do next. If you can escape the battle and return home, using your flaps in combination with your remaining control surfaces and engine power can sometimes be enough for you to land safely and repair.
loss of engine power or complete engine failure is not the end of the world. If you can maintain control of the aircraft, attempt to glide away from the battle and search for a flat piece of land free from trees or buildings. Then set her down. Oh, this is good. This is real good. When your aircraft is heavily damaged, such as this P-80, after colliding with another jet, you may experience multiple system failures. In this case, the engine has failed. Both wings have lost lift capability, and aileron control cables have snapped. Rudder and elevator control are still functional. Due to heavier damage to the left wing, the aircraft wants to bank to the left. To counter this, perform a slow descending spiral away from the damaged wing towards your chosen landing area. This keeps the wings level until touchdown. Ah, hell of it. I'll keep it on. Oh shit! Sometimes even the best plans can fail. If your landing attempt is unsuccessful and you are unable to find an alternate site nearby, it's time to hit the silk. I'm punching out. In addition to the previous scenarios, a pilot must always be aware of the potential for fire breaking out on their aircraft. Fire is unpredictable and lethal. Be prepared to depart your aircraft if you see flames. There are two types of fires, engine fires and fuel tank fires. If you get hit in the engine and begin to flame, immediately reduce engine power to zero and press your ignition toggle switch. This is set to I by default. Push the plane over into a dive to build speed. Hopefully, if these steps were completed quickly enough, the fire should blow out. Advance the throttle, and your engine should restart automatically. Thank you very much. A fuel tank fire is slightly more dangerous than an engine fire, as there is no way for a pilot to aid the aircraft. Only wait until the fuel has burned out of the ruptured tanks. Gears down and locked, I'm coming down. Or I'm not. Fire's out, engine's good, fuel's good. I am still in this fight! The ability to take damage and remain combat effective is crucial to a pilot's success in the sky. You won't always have the opportunity to go home and repair, so be ready to fight for your life. Firing your onboard weaponry can help stop your aircraft quickly if you are forced to land in combat. The point. Getting down. Make the best of your current situation. If landing your aircraft is impossible, either by damage or lack of a runway, do what you can to help your team. Taking a crippled aircraft into a head-on attack with a fully functional enemy aircraft may be a good exchange. The enemy pilot has much more to lose than you do. If your aircraft is entirely combat ineffective, a helpful role you can perform is to act as bait to lure enemy aircraft into an ambush or draw them away from a capture zone or other key objective. You may also choose to become an observer, 
to spot enemy aircraft and inform friendlies of danger. With skillful piloting and determination, you will be able to survive whatever your enemy can throw at you and return home safely.